Hello friends, today we are going to study environmental problems and issues. Under this we will focus on economic development and environmental sustainability. Friends, let me introduce to the topic. Economic development aims at improvement of human well-being, but in pursuit of development, the negative effects of development are either ignored or not taken into regard. Generally, the negative effects of economic development are seen on environment. It has been found that the economic development and environment are closely interrelated. The major challenge that we face now is to ensure that development strategies for economic growth are implemented in harmony with environmental sustainability. The major issues in this regard are related to environmental management, wealth creation, institutions, equity, poverty, energy, trade, human health, ecological sustainability, climate change, biodiversity and consequences of rapid urbanization. Hence the decision makers, policy analysts, government, NGOs, public and the society as a whole have to understand the need for environmentally sustainable development. There is a need to give priority to eliminate poverty, control population growth, restrict environmental depletion and protect biodiversity. Countries which have pushed economic development without its environmental consequences such as pollution, depletion in natural resources and distortion in the system are now facing consequences, water and air pollution, pesticide in food supply, climate change, global warming, greenhouse gases and ozone layer etc. From this it can be inferred that while pursuing for development the adverse effects of development on the economy should be taken into consideration. This is especially in the context of environmental degradation and loss of biodiversity. Once the biodiversity loss has escalated to the point of no return, reversing the situation is impossible. Under such circumstances, societies will have to adapt to and cope with environmental changes and see too negative an effect on their livelihoods. This in fact is an effort to retain the quality environment and reduce poverty. This could enable the countries to find durable equilibrium between their economy and their ecology. Now friends let us look at what are the lesser known areas of concerns of development policy makers. Development policy makers often emphasize economic growth as the most important way to reduce poverty raise living standards and manage the environment. This justifies the increase in consumption of natural resources for generating economic activity. At the same time, policy makers have shown less concern towards the rate at which resource depletion or the effects of waste products on socio-economic systems and on environment takes place. Now friends, we will focus on new era of global society that is age of sustainable development. The world has entered in a new era where the global society is characterized by interconnectivity. People's ideas, technologies, businesses and even epidemic disease across the borders are seen to be connected. We live in a new information age and also have fears of unknown global scale environmental disruption, moreover new and different business practices. The technologies, size and age structure of populations are changing rapidly. We now have new opportunities and we face new risks. Sustainable development focuses on the interlinkages of economic, social and environmental changes and a way of describing our shared aspirations for decent life, combining economic development, social inclusion and environmental sustainability. This new era could be described by new global goals, namely Sustainable Development Goals or in short SDGs. 
The novelty of this era is the fact that leading geoscientists have coined the term Anthropocene with the Greek roots meaning human made that is Anthropo and new means scene. The Anthropocene is our current unprecedented time period of the earth in which the earth's physical range, climate, biodiversity, chemistry is mainly driven by human activity. Leading ecologists have adopted the idea of planetary boundaries to explain the limits beyond which human activities will tip the earth into uncharted and dangerous patterns of climate disruptions such as loss of biodiversity and change in the chemistry of the air, land and oceans. Both of these concepts describe the realities of this new age of sustainable development. There is a change in the world's geopolitics. We have been shifted from bipolar world that is USA and the Soviet Union to a complex multipolar world with many regional powers and nearly 200 countries many new with fragile institutions. This new multipolar world must find the means to preserve peace, pursue economic development and face the unprecedented environmental challenges of our age. There is a need for new form of global governance which will play a key role in meeting the new sustainable development goals. We need to determine ways to end extreme poverty and protect the planet from the side effects of our own actions. The world's economy is growing rapidly. The gross world product, in short, GWP is now 200 times larger than back in 1750. It is also now increasing interconnected through trade, finance, technologies, production flows, migration and social networks. But because of unequal income distribution between the countries and within the country, it is creating a threatening situation to earth itself. The gigantic world economy is creating even bigger environmental crisis, one that threatens the lives and well-being of billions of people and the survival of millions of other species on the planet. Environmental threats are arising because of human activities which is changing not only earth's climate but also the availability of fresh water the ocean's chemistry and the habitats of other species. This in turn brings changes in the functions of key processes such as the cycles of water, nitrogen and carbon on which life depends. Sustainable development tries to make sense of the interactions of three complex systems, the world economy, the global society and the earth's physical environment. This course can be changed by way of combining economic development with environmental sustainability. Sustainable Development Goals in short SDGs can help us to guide the future course of economic and social development on the planet. Sustained development calls for a world in which economic progress is widespread, extreme poverty is eliminated. Social trust is encouraged through policies that strengthen the community and the environment is protected from human induced degradation. In reality, sustainable development recommends a holistic framework in which society aims for economic, social and environmental goals. In brief, sustainable development goals call for socially inclusive and environmentally sustainable economic growth. Sustainable development envisions four basic objectives of a good society, economic prosperity, social inclusion and interrelation, environmental sustainability and good governments and business. The important challenge that our generation is facing is to achieve sustainable development for our own populated, unequal and degraded planet. The sustainable development goals must show a pathway for the future development of the planet. Number 4. Connections between environment, development and sustainability. Since early 70s, it has been realized that environment, development and sustainability are interrelated. The brief history of these three connections 
can enable us better understanding of these connections. Number 1. The term sustainable as applied to ecosystems was first used by fisheries managers as maximum sustainable yield to denote the maximum fish catch per year consistent with a stable fish population. Number 2. In 1972 at the United Nations Conference on the Human Environment in Stockholm, the challenge of maintaining sustainability in the context of economic growth and development was first brought to the global forefront. Number 3. In the same year, the book Limit to Growth with empirical support published by Club of Rome, which forcefully argued that continued economic growth on the prevailing economic patterns would collide with the Earth's finite resources, leading to future generation to overshoot and collapse. Number 4. The phrase sustainable was introduced eight years later in an influential publication entitled World Conservation Strategy Living Resources Conservation for Sustainable Development in 1980. This path-breaking publication mentions that human beings in their quest for economic development and employment of the riches of nature must come to terms with the reality of resource limitation and the carrying capacity of ecosystems and must take into account of the needs of future generations. The purpose of the document was to help advance the achievement of sustainable development through the conservation of living resources. Number 5. The United Nations Commission on Environment and Development, whose chairman Gro Harlem Berlin, gave a classical definition of the concept of sustainable development, one that was used for the next 25 years, which was Sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. This innovative definition of sustainable development captured the concept of intergenerational natural resource distribution. Number 6. One of the key principles of Rio Declaration in 1992 was that development today must not threaten the needs of present and future generation. Point 7. In the literature on sustainable development over time, we find that its definition changes, its dimensions and evolution into more practical approach. It focuses less on intergenerational needs and more on the holistic approach, linking economic development, social inclusion and environmental sustainability. The United Nations World Summit on Sustainable Development, in short, WSST, in Johannesburg in 2002, came out with plan of implementation and emphasized the integration of the three components of sustainable development, such as economic development, social development, and mutually reinforcing pillars. The concept of intergenerational justice remains, but it is now secondary to the emphasis on holistic development that embraces economic, social and environmental objectives. Number 8. The holistic version of sustainable development was again emphasized in a comprehensive manner in Rio Plus 20 Summit in 2012 in which we focused on the future we want. That puts the aim of sustainable development in this way. We also reaffirm the need to achieve sustainable development by promoting sustained, inclusive and equitable economic growth, creating greater opportunities for all, reducing inequalities, raising basic standards of living, fostering equitable social development and inclusive and promoting integrated and resources and ecosystems that support inter alia economic, social and human development while facilitating ecosystem conservation, regeneration and restoration and resilience in the face of new and emerging challenges. The sustainable development goals shown in this document are to be based on three part framework. The sustainable development goals were announced in the future we want. The SDGs should address and incorporate in a balanced way 
all three dimensions of sustainable development and their interlinkages. We also underscore that sustainable development goals should be action oriented, concise and easy to communicate, limited in number, aspirational, global in nature and universally applicable to all countries while taking into account different national realities, capacities and levels of development and respecting national policies and priorities. Governments should drive implementation of the sustainable development goals with the active involvement of all relevant stakeholders as appropriate. Point 5. Sustainable development as a normative approach. Sustainable development is a way to understand the world as a complex interaction of economic, social, environmental and political system. It envisions a proper functioning society, one that delivers well-being for its citizens today and for future generations. It urges us to have holistic vision of what good society should be. A good society is one which is free from poverty, inequality and discrimination, having cohesion, cooperation and togetherness and fairness. It is being a good steward of the natural environment and should be functioning with good governance. A good society is not only economically prosperous society but also one that is also socially inclusive, environmentally sustainable and well governed. Number 6. Pathways to Sustainable Development Number 1. To understand the interlinkages of the economy, society, environment and politics. Number 2. To do something about the dangers we face to set sustainable development goals and to achieve them. Number 3. To find a global path made up of local and national path in which the world promotes inclusive and sustainable economic development, thereby combining the economic, social and environmental objectives. Number 4. To have good governance of both government and businesses. This would take care of the rule of law, accountability, transparency and responsiveness to the needs of stakeholders. If we can wisely design our business practices and technologies, undoubtedly sustainable development is both feasible and affordable. Now friends, let us summarize this session. As we have seen the connections between environment, development and sustainability and also explain the holistic approach to achieve sustainable development goals, pathways to sustainable development goals and the concept of good society. It is worth quoting John F. Kennedy here. In his famous peace speech in June 1963, he said, By defining our goal more manageable and less remote, we can help all people to see it, to draw hope from it and to move irresistibly.